Hello, welcome to my series about Chopin Mazurkas. Today I invite you to uh, the lecture about Mazurka Opus 30, number 3 in D flat major. Let's listen to a little bit of the, the first part. So that's, we can call it part A. Um, well, this mazurka is completely different than uh, the previous two. First of all, well, it's the first one in major key, first and only one in this opus. And the character is totally different, right? It's a very masculine, at least the beginning. Uh, friends, Chopin's friends, Polish pe people, when they heard this mazurka, they told him, Oh, you know, this sounds like a polonaise. It's like a little Polish polonaise. Then Chopin smiled and answered, Yes, maybe it's true. <laughs> and indeed, it sounds like a polonaise. What is polonaise? Well, polonaise, the spirit of polonaise, the Polish traditional dance, but dance from the high class of aristocratic people, um, aristocracy, uh, is the noble, noble dance full of power, of uh, of um, the feeling of proudness and also this kind of patriotism and here we have a little bit the same except there there is no uh, polonaise rhythm of course because it's a mazur it's a typical mazur bam pa bam pa yam pa bam yam pa bam pa yam pa bam it's a we can even dance it um, but everything starts from the introduction. Introduction is a typic, a very typical folk uh, imitation of, of, well, let's say, double bass. And here we have to uh, change the one. Here is one, two, three, one, two, three. But then we have three, one, two, three, one, two. Every time the accent says to us that it, this is the one. So it, it's like changing. it starts to improvise the second time the third time then, and then everyone starts to dance this is a little pianistically pianistically demanding because we have the thirds Especially this one, because here we have the repetition, uh, the, the the note which at first is in the lower voice and then in the upper voice. So we have to change the touch of the same key. And then we have to make a phrase and we have to try to make it sound like a mazurka. So um, how to do it with the rhythm? Definitely we need fermatas. We need fermatas means uh, stops. We need to wait uh, um, bef before every new phrase. So this is like a question. We, uh, then we wait and then we do and then we have this uh, what, what is in the in all the mazurkas in opus 30 we have suddenly the same phrase but piano pianissimo possibile so very 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 soft and also sad because it's a minor key Then again for tap and again piano. 
So definitely we have a bipolar, bipolar person. We have somebody, well, maybe Chopin, who is not, who doesn't know which direction to go. Well, that, that will also come later. But here we have more, that, do I have power or I have no power? It starts like I have a lot of power to fight. I'm, I'm going to fight in my life in my difficult life. But then we have this, the second, uh, second person. And again, the first and second. And then again we have forte and then this phrase is going up. Here we come to this point and then the same phrase very very sad and very silent so the the key to the first part which we can call part a of this mazurka is to make these big differences so that they are heard and, and visible and understood with, like with the power and no power moods we have we have the well kind of happy in B major and then B flat major a little bit down and again Exactly the symbol of being uh, mm, having trouble with decision, with making a decision. This is something that happened in Chopin's life at that time. Well, with women, uh, what was going on is that there were two women, and uh, one of them, uh, Maria Wojcicka, was far away. But well, he was engaged to her. Um, but in fact, he was slowly losing hope that one day this love will be fulfilled. And there was another one, of course, the famous Georges Saint. We, and she was close and she, it was easy to visit her and to get the relationship with her, get into the relationship. So, well, uh, maybe that's about it, maybe not, but definitely this was inside Chopin's soul. We know it from letters and from biographies. Um, and in this mazurka we have it a lot. So here this person cannot decide which key sounds better, right? This is still part B, but maybe B1, let's say, the new melody. Third time and fourth time. So fourth time the same short melody, every time in different key. Um, again, well, it's this person is so much lost. It's completely lost. It's trying to find the way. You know, when, when the melody is trying to get the the correct key tonality then it, it seems it means that it's looking for the way so listen we have right 
It's like this one. No, no, doesn't sound. Well. Maybe this one. I know. Maybe this one. Maybe this one. And this was the first woman. This far away woman. The symbol of the woman which is far away. And then we have another one which is close. And the the the, the motif is the same, but forte. Listen. <laughs> B2, very beautiful. And again in piano, so very soft. And now the same melody in forte. we are completely lost again. All this mazurka is about finding the right way in life, I think. As I said, well, I'm, I, don't, I don't focus on folk dances here. I don't really think it's necessary. Of course we could do it, like before every time I did, but uh, instead I think it's much more important to find the, the context, to find the inner message which is in this mazurka. Uh, because as I said before, the Opus 30, Opus 30 is very special, very introvert, I would say. Of course, this mazurka is maybe not, but the, the symbolism which is inside can be very much, and it's very sincere also. Um, so it's every time the same technique, right? We have melody which is soft, then it, which is loud, the same melody, then soft, then loud. So two, it's like the same melody, so it's the same feeling, maybe, but for two different people, for two different person, for two different women. Chopin was definitely uh, lost, um, and and that's uh, that's maybe one of the reasons. Um, and in, in my opinion, for me, it helps me understand uh, this way of of uh, composing. So let's listen again to this uh, the last very nice melody. It's just pianistically very difficult because we have a sixth. And everything must be played legato. And the, and the phrasing must be shaped as beautiful as possible. like a like polonaise spirit. And then it stops and then something dark. It's maybe like a somebody's knocking the door. And who is there? It's a fate. Uh, and then again we are at the beginning. us to the last mazurka which I'm going to talk about in the next episode. Thank you very much for listening and hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.